Let's get this semester started. Welcome to, what are we doing here? Beginning slash introductory algebra. So at the beginning of this semester, we're just going to start with some, some terms and definitions. So when I say these words, you're not giving me the, the crazy look like you have no idea what I'm talking about. So if I talk about a constant, uh, a constant is just, it's just any number. That's all it is. Any number that you think of is going to be a constant. And the way that we express these, the symbols that we use, are symbols we've used forever. You know, if I say five, five is a constant. And what I mean by constant is that I mean, you know, its value doesn't change. If you see this symbol today, you see it tomorrow, or in a hundred years, it still means what? Five. It still means five, whatever it is that we're talking about, right? If I have negative 12, that again is a constant, it's a negative number, but negative numbers can be constants, okay? Even your favorite guys, fractions, aren't those constants as well? Yeah. And sometimes we have symbols that in the proper context will also represent constants, especially something like pi, right? I know what you're thinking, you know what, I could go for some pi right now. Nice. <laughs> I was going to say apple pie, but then my mind goes to like a, a, a cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the way my wife makes it, it's more, it's more like a cheese pie, but it's ah, so stinky. Anyway, uh, there's also Euler's constant, E. You see this guy show up in things related to exponential growth and decay. This guy's a super neat number, and you can learn more about him once you learn about factorials and infinite sums. You may want to go over to my uh, playlist on college algebra and see if you can find this guy towards the bottom. All right, all right, good, good job. Yes, I see I have to teach to you guys. We also have to teach to everybody out there in the internet world. You think it's, it's funny, but they're, they're, they're not laughing. They have to sit through all of this. Actually, you shouldn't be laughing because they're fast forwarding past all of you. Uh, variable. Does anybody know what a variable is? Love the blank faces. Changing. Well, it means that it can change, right. And it's letter. any letter or symbol. It's any letter or symbol that represents some unknown value. It's any letter or symbol that represents an unknown value, okay? It varies, it can change. So from one problem to the next, it could have a completely different meaning. Our favorite variable probably is x, right? You see x today or you see it tomorrow doesn't necessarily represent the same number. No. no. What's your <coughs> second favorite variable? Why? Why? Because I want to know. <laughs> So it's really sad is that I use that same joke every semester, but it's brand new to you guys, so you guys think it's funny. Who's sad now? Uh, maybe you <laughs> use the letter N, all right? Or maybe you get crazy and you use smiley face. I did that one time on a test, and a student kept putting different hats on the smiley face. <laughs> it sounds funny, but they were essentially changing the variable. So I was a little peeved about that, and I even made a note to that effect, uh, basically, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> so if you ever see me write this on your test, that means, what are you doing? <laughs> and, and it can easily be translated in a line from a movie called The Sandlot, you're killing me, Smalls. That means the same thing as, what are you doing? You guys okay with the definition for a constant and variable? Let's talk about what it means to be a term. What, what, is, what is a term? It's a one equation on the side of an operation symbol. Okay, it's kind of like that. No, it's a combination of constants and variables. But it's a combination like this, though. A term is the product. What does the word product mean? Right, the word product means multiplication, so it's the product of a constant. It's the product of a constant and 
variables that are raised in variables raised to non-negative powers. The term is the product of a constant and variables raised to non-negative powers. So examples of this would just be basically combining constants and variables through the operation of multiplication. So we had an example of a constant of 5 and a variable is x. So if I put those together and I say 5x, that creates a term for me. I mean, really, these guys individually are terms. So it's the product of a constant and variables raised to non-negative powers. That's understood to be multiplication between the 5 and the x. Do I always write that little dot there for multiplication? No, no but it's understood to be that way. <clears throat> when you see pieces like this that are juxtaposed, that means they're right next to each other. Okay, I don't think that juxtaposed is the name of a strip club, but when these things are right next to each other, that implies to us there's multiplication. Now, there are examples when things are right next to each other, but it does not indicate multiplication. For example, if I were to have this guy, if I were to write two and a half, the two and the one half are right next to each other, but does that mean multiplication? What is the implied operation here? If it's not multiplication, what is it? It's understood to be addition. It's understood to be two holes and half of another one, right? So this is one of those rare times when juxtaposition does not indicate multiplication. You know, I could pretty much put anything together. I could put, you know, seven-eighths along with y to the fifth. That's an example of a term. I've got a constant, 7 eighths, times a variable raised to a non-negative power, to the power of 5. I mean, as stated before, even if I were to just write this number, negative 1,294, that number by itself is considered a term. Okay. So you have three different terms here that I have written out. says raised to non-negative powers. The number zero is non-negative because it's zero. And so you could imagine this having x to the zero, but x to the zero, as long as x doesn't equal zero, anything to the zero power is one. So it would still be just negative 1,294. Okay. Well, when we're talking about terms, Let's, we want to talk about the coefficient of a term. Now, right now, it's just a matter of identifying a certain piece of a term. But later on, it's going to have much more meaning to us, especially when it comes to graphing. So the coefficient is just the constant part of a term. It's the constant factor of a term. So what I want to do here is I just want to list some, some terms, and I want you to identify what is the, what's the coefficient, what's the constant part of it. So we're going to make a list of terms, and then you're going to tell me what is the coefficient. Okay. So if I were to say 5x, what's the coefficient, what's the constant factor, the constant part of this term? It's just 5, right? That coefficient is basically telling you how much x do you have. Well, I've got 5x's, right? If I were to say 'say this, if I have negative 7 y to the 12th, what's the coefficient there? Negative 7. It's just negative 7, right? Okay, what if I write x over 2? What's the coefficient there? How much x do you have? One. You have 1x? You have 2x? You have half? 
How much do you have? X over 2. X is already 1. Oh, I want you, we got to back up here. X is not 1. X is a what? Variable. X is a variable. So do you know his value? No. No. A lot of times when students say that X is 1, what they mean to say is that it has a, a coefficient, an understood 1 in front of that, right? So I could write this to be 1 half times x, right? So it's one half. So it is one half. Okay. So the coefficient there is one half. All right, keeping that in mind, what if I were to say 7y over 4? What's the coefficient there? If you wrote this as something times y, what would that something be? 7? Is this thing the same as saying 7 times y? It is? Well, then why in the world do I have 4 here? Well, it's 7 4 times y. Seven but it's 7 fourths seven four times, mm -hmm. times y. If you look at this as a fraction, this is 7 fourths of y. So the coefficient here is 7 over 4. We have to be able to identify that coefficient accurately so that we can do things with graphing in the next chapter. Okay? So if you're not sure about this, rewrite it to be a number times that variable like you see here. So 7y over 4 is the same thing as 7 fourths y. Okay? What if I have negative w? What's his coefficient? As we kind of saw back over here, there's understood to be a 1 right here, so that would be the coefficient of negative 1. So being able to identify the coefficient will allow us to do other things. It helps us with graphing, it helps us with solving equations, it helps us with combining like terms.